Those by the wayside who don't respond at all when the word is preached. They show no religious interest. Second, those on the stony ground, they have a superficial acceptance of the truth. Part rock, part their own self, and part good soil, part Jesus. Trying to serve two masters. Accepting Jesus in a time of emotion and feeling. Tribulations come, they fall by the wayside. But there's a third type of soil. And that is the seed that fell among the thorns. You see, there was good soil. But there were thorns. Notice Luke chapter 8 and verse 14. Luke chapter 8 and verse 14 describes this kind of soil. It says there in Luke chapter 8 and verse 14 the following. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who when they have heard, see they hear also, when they have heard, go out and are what? And are choked by what? With cares. By the way, if you go to the Gospel uh, of Mark, chapter 4 and verse 19, it adds an expression. It says, by the cares of this world. It adds that, by the cares of this world. Do you know what the cares of this world are? Wanting to accumulate houses and cars and money and stocks and bonds and wanting to work two jobs. Things that are not bad in themselves but which absorb our time and effort. Those are, that's part of the thorns. The cares of this life. Notice once again, uh, Luke chapter 8 and verse 14 it says now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who when they have heard go out and are choked with the cares of this world if you compare Mark what else actually Mark says with the deceitfulness of riches see that's why you have to compare all three Gospels because each one expresses it a little differently. It's not riches. It is the deceitfulness of riches. And then something else. And what? And the pleasures of life. And bring no fruit to maturity. The thorns. By the way, what do thorns represent in Scripture? You remember in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 18... What came in consequence of sin? God said, Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. And then what does he say? Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. So thorns and thistles represent sin. Sin comes in. The pleasures of this world the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches come in and they choke the plant which has begun to grow. Now we have biblical examples of this. We have a rich young ruler that came to Jesus. Do you know the Bible says that Jesus loved this young man? He's seen Jesus blessing the children. And he says, I love that man. Look at how the children are drawn to him. And so he comes to Jesus, and he says, what do I need to do to have eternal life? Jesus says, well, keep the commandments. He says, which? So then Jesus quotes the last table of the law. And the young man says, I've done all these things since I was a young boy. What more do I lack? And Jesus looks at him, and he says, if you would be perfect, go sell all that you have, and give it to the poor. And you will have treasure with me in heaven. And come follow me. And the Bible says that this young man left sad. Sorrowful. Because he had what? Because he had many possessions. Did he allow the deceitfulness of riches to choke the seed in his heart? You know, folks, as, as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, many times we say, Oh, no, I'm not a slave to money. I have no problems with money. I can handle it. 
and yet what are we doing? We're accumulating things that, we're not, that we don't really need. Isn't that right? Do we need four houses to live in? Do we actually need four automobiles? Do we actually need tens of thousand, uh, th thousands of dollars in the bank while the work of God is languishing? Do you know the time is coming when people are going to cry out, why didn't I use my money? Why didn't I invest my money in the kingdom of God to further the gospel? Why did I accumulate it for myself when we won't be able to buy and sell? People are going to say that, but it's going to be too late. The deceitfulness of riches has been the ruin of their souls. By the way, the Apostle Paul had something very interesting to say. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 9 and 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 9 and 10. The Apostle Paul had something very interesting to say about money. And I want you to read, uh, to read it carefully with me because uh, some people misread it. They give the impression that riches are bad. Riches are not bad. Notice what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9. But those who desire to be rich, notice it's not even saying the rich, but those who want to be rich. Those who desire to be rich fall into temptations and a what? A snare. And into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Because the more money you have, the more toys you want, and the more entertainment you want, and the more fun you want. Now notice verse 10. For money is the root of all kinds of evil. Ah, thank you, thank you. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Or as the King James says, is the root of all evil. Now notice this. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Do you know, I have seen many rich people that are absolutely miserable because they're always afraid they're going to lose their riches and they're always thinking about making more and investing more do you know that Jesus gave a parable which describes this type of person notice Luke chapter 12 Luke chapter 12 and verse 15 Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Folks, is it not time for us to invest our treasures in the heavenly bank? Do you know how, how you can send your money to heaven now? You don't send it, you don't go to NASA and have NASA send it in a rocket up to heaven. What you do is you invest in His cause in the salvation of souls. And when the souls end up there, your investment is there. Now notice what we find in Luke, once again, chapter 12 and beginning at verse 15, 12 verse 15. This is another parable of Jesus. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Life does not consist in the abundance of what? Of things which we possess. And now he's going to illustrate. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Are you catching the connection with the parable of the sower? Verse 20. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. We find John saying, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. And I know we pay lip service to this, folks. Do you believe that we're living in the last moments of human history?